Just testing some tubes that came in. I popped them in this amp and this amp, and getting to listen to them. Then I burn them in heavy on the bench, you know. If they if, if they pass, and they're passing now, I mean, it's getting some good tones with the Les Paul with them. Speaking of tubes, somebody who was uh, heavily influ influential in the the tubes for the tube amp industries recently tragically passed away. Friend of yours. That is correct. Yeah. Aspen. Mm -hmm. Aspen yeah. Pittman. Yep. He, uh, he wrote a heavily influential book, too, of which I think you have probably the most worn copy. More than likely. The most worn copy. <laughs> well, I mean, there's an elastic around it holding it together. It's nothing but a bunch of pages now. Yeah. And he wrote this with with your other passed away Yeah, friend. Ken helped him a lot on that Ken book. Ken Fisher? Yeah, yeah, with all the technical details and stuff. So well, what was his influence in the... Um, for, for you and a, he Ken. He was brilliant. That guy, Aspen, he was a real smart businessman, first of all. Entrepreneur. Entrepreneur more than anything else. Well, camera's just a little bit this way. If you just pull the handle, just a, never mind. It's good. It's good the way it is. Anyway, he was really, really a smart guy. I mean, um, his first business, groove tubes, selling selling other people's tubes with his... He re, what, he relabeled? With his stamp on it was, you know, at first look to people that don't understand tubes. Thought he was pirating tubes or something. Yeah, it's, I had guys, you know, you know the, the idiots on the internet forums now that think they know everything? Well, those guys were around when I was young too, before there was forums or before there was an internet, okay? And they came into music stores where we worked and blah, 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 Just blah, made jackasses yeah, of themselves. You know, like they know everything, right? They, they, they were really, you know, just about us. And I remember one day one of those guys said to me, he said to me, yeah, I just learned something really important today. Groove tubes are a scam, man. They're like just restamped other tubes. I remember looking at the guy going, what? Did he never they, claimed that they were. Did they made say anywhere that they made tubes? I mean, <laughs> are you not paying attention? Do you not understand the, the brilliance of this? And I'll tell you what it is. Okay, you guys take for granted now. You just buy tubes anywhere. You know, everybody matches tubes, and you can, you can buy. But he's your tubes. the one who started doing you it. You couldn't get tubes when when we was first started. You, you had could to get matched you, quads and pairs. You, yeah, you had to go and buy a whole lot of tubes and sit there yourself trying to match them up. And if you had a a, a shop full of repairs and stuff, trying to get them out, trying to get it, you know, turn mediocre amps into really good amps, it was not that easy. You know, it, and it was, so his work made that took that part of the equation and made it easier to do. Yeah. The Sam has a 
slightly hissy preamp too, but I think it's this amp. It is. It's that amp. I'll have to change that one too, and then retest. So tubes it. are <clears throat> a pretty big issue with tubes. Tube are, they're a huge issue, and 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 this guy had had a look into the future. So he was a forward-thinking yeah. entrepreneur who, yeah. who made your job and Ken's job and and guys like you. Oh, we, much easier, yeah, guys it, who repair. Yeah, and, when that when that first things. happened, it was like, oh my god, I can get I could even get octets all match, you know, and, like for your gold amp. Yeah, and he would make deals and get. There were still great tubes available then. You got to remember that. Okay, there were a lot of the really good tubes were still available to buy. The vintage or yeah, what, what people pay tubes. a fortune for now, you know, and he like could, the tubes in your stereo. Yeah, and he could get those tubes, and and so he had a lot to choose from that he would label up and mark, you know. How did he test um, them and get them all marked up to 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 match them? Well, I, I don't want to get into all that. It's technical, but it's it's just pretty st straightforward, you know. But um, but but, but nobody it. had done it. See, that was just a brilliant idea that, you know, understanding what makes. You can take, you know, a, a, a Marshall JTM 45 combo, you know, an original one, and then there's another one, another one, and then you play another Friends, and, you know, then there's that great one. Oh, my God, that one sounds great. And then three weeks later, it doesn't because you blew a tube in it, and, it, and you know. Uh, and Good luck replacing it. Yeah, and, and, and if the amp truly had great sounding transformers, it would have to have some really nice matched tubes in it to really shine. So how, how many of those amps were great amps that weren't tubed Never right anyway? Never shine. So my point was, I, 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 that's my job. My job was to fix amps for people and make them sound good. So this guy just made it so easy because I could call up and get exactly what I wanted. You know, I bought tons of tubes from him. Did you say he traveled overseas to... to um... Yeah, that's another thing. I want to talk about that after tubes, okay? Um, but the, the tube thing, his idea, it was just, it was brilliant and is commonplace today. You don't just stick tubes in an amp that aren't matched and tested, you know. I mean, unless you have no clue what you're right. Doing. Even if they're junk modern tubes, they still need to be matched and tested, okay? Because there's no no two tubes are alike. You need you need you need a lot of tubes to do that, to match them up. But what what unless his idea? Purchase them already matched. What his idea was, which a lot of people are going to argue that, well, the blah 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 blah. But but but, <laughs> his idea was the one through ten thing, okay. Now, I'm going to tell you what it really is out of his tubes. And number five is the good tube. That's the right tube, a four or a five, okay? Because you can make thousands of tubes in a batch or whatever, right? And There's tolerances. There's tolerances. And when the tooling is all really good, when you go through all this testing and you've got tubes all matched up from one through ten, so there's a sweet some are drawing like way too much current, those are tens. Yeah, they'll make your amp sound harder. So he was right. I mean, they do that. The, the lower numbers make your amp sound softer. But the ultimate running tube of that kind. But we didn't need to tell anybody that. He wasn't stupid. He knew that. But he was also a smart businessman. So he could sell all the tubes he got. You get it? He could take take and match them. Okay. By matching and, and, them, that made them. And you'd say, oh, I like real sweet sounding tubes. So you'd get like real low numbers from him. Like ones and twos. Yeah, threes, ones, twos, threes, right? And but you'd be changing them often. You know, because what they don't last long, right? And then you'd get, oh, you'd get tens and say, I want the hardest, coldest sound. You know, and those tubes are drawing a lot of current. You know, they don't really run right in an amp. But if you determined you like that sound, the other thing is, is you could always call them and go, but you'd have to know the kind you bought because it just says groove tube on whether it's a Chinese tube or or, or black plate six L six. So they actually painted their logos onto the tube. Yeah. So if he had, if he still had those, you could say, "I want a, a number six because you liked a number six last time," and you you could tube your amp and 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 technically not have to bias it. You really should, should be close enough. Should always be biasing it. Not not on an amp like mine, you don't have to bias it, but on an amp that that needs to be biased. But when he was sending me tubes, the right and the left were always dead on. I mean, his testing was really good. He was the benchmark for that. For, for and then everyone just jumped in on the. Well, he was the only one doing it for quite some time. He was, like. and then everybody else got involved in it, you know. But I, I'll tell you another thing he did that um, a lot of you collector guys out there buying and selling these Marshall amps over here in America, okay, not in England. Um, there weren't many of those amps here, okay. There were tweeds all over the place, there were black faces all over the place and silver faces, what they do, right? 
But if you wanted a Selma or, or any kind of the old Marshalls or any, anything from over there, the stuff just wasn't here. So he was one of the guys that Bingo. brought them here? Yeah. He brought a lot of those amps here. Didn't you say that he was would call you and ask you, like kind of pre-sell them so he could fill the yeah. containers from up? from England. He would go over there and... Um, call you in the middle of the night? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because, because he would have to fill a shipping container to make it worth his while. Okay? And it takes a long time to sell the stuff off because those amps, a, a killer combo was only $600 back then for a JTM combo, okay? Wasn't much room to even make money. He did this because he loved this. Also gave more customers over here to buy tubes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he was smart. Win, 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 right? And you had a lot of customers who would want to buy those amps anyway so he would call his I did, but guys see, like you and Ken he had different profit margins like with a guy like me he would call me from there he got to fill a shipping container and he'd be traveling the countryside you know in bars at night listening to people who say they have an amp or whatever going, going out and finding these amps and he'd call me and say I got this 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 he'd read me this long list say what do you want I'd say well I'll take that and ten more of those if you find them and I'd buy two dozen or whatever you know and uh, so that he knew, he probably had some other guys they like me too. They were pre-sold. Yeah, he knew when the shipping container came here, he could package those amps up and mail them directly to me and have some of that income, that investment At money. At least pay for his shipping. Right back. Yeah, it. because you got to pay for all the boat, the, the, you know, the... Yeah. The, 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 the shipping was probably more The shipping container too, on, on a boat. you got to pay for your trip. You're out there for two or three weeks, you know. All your drinks. Yeah, it's expensive, <laughs> you know. So you could thank him. For a lot of the vintage amps, Joe exactly. Bonamassa probably pretty happy. He's probably got a few of those, huh? Yeah, yeah. A lot of people. I, I sometimes I see those amps and wonder if they were ones I had, you know, um, because a lot of them were wired wrong at Marshall for the wrong tubes. i was speaking to him, speaking to Joe, um, on the amp that he owns now. He didn't own it at the time it was here, but um, one of his friends brought brought me this uh, killer JTM combo. And this combo blew everyone away. This was like one of the best ones you ever heard. But I know about amps. When I heard it, I knew why it was, because it was no good. It wouldn't run. And it didn't because it, it kept it was really clean because no one could use it much because it just kept frying KT66s and those things are, you know. Super cheap. Yeah, a couple of thousand dollars for a pair, <laughs> you know. So people just kept, you know, because the type of people that own this So amp. someone buys it and they're like, ah, I can't deal with this anymore, and they sell it, and then someone else buys it. and they get Right, it. well, this last guy had it for a long time, but just deemed it just eight tubes, and then he, he brought it over, left it with me for two weeks. And um, it, it was wired. It was wired for EL34s, but it was a KT66 amp. You know what's going to happen there, right? <laughs> and, and the tone, you can hear it immediately. The thing just screamed because it was begging for mercy every time you turn the switch on till the time you turned it off or it you know blew a tube and um what was wrong with it, it i just told you it was wired for el 34s factory not never touched you know so what did you have to change in it uh the biasing oh you know? just the biasing yeah but it was fixed you know just turn a knob you know you have to change resistors and stuff oh so but anyway that amp was here for for three weeks plus i knew the guy before so i've heard the amp before but but i really got familiar with it because it was here for three weeks and this isn't like way, way ago. I'm, most of my stories are from a long... This was just like, I don't know, six, seven years ago. So anyway, I guess Joe always wanted that amp from him, but, but they were friends, so Joe could have it anytime he wanted. He could just borrow it anytime he wanted. The guy, the guy has tons of amps, you know? So right, uh, John? Yeah, but they, he finally wound up in some sort of deal. He finally well, let, they him, traded let him have it. Yeah. But the funniest thing is, I didn't even... You know, he had, he had finally got it from him, but I knew he used it a lot. And then... He had a new song out and was plastered all over, um, what do you call it? YouTube? Facebook and, 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 and... All the different Yeah, on Facebook, you know. Places. You know, where they do in the song in the studio and everything. It was kind of cool. And I, so I, I'd heard, heard the song, and I know the sound of that amp, you know. And I was talking to uh, Joe's, one of Joe's right-hand men, one of his techs, because he was bringing something over for me to repair. And I said, hey, man, yeah, I heard that new song. Sounds really good. I said, John's amp sounds killer good in the studio there. And he goes, how'd you know that was John's amp? And I guess this guy didn't know, you know. I said, well, because that amp was here for three weeks just a month ago. You know what I mean? And I know the sound of that amp inside out. I could hear it in the studio. I knew it was that amp, you know. That's kind of unbelievable, actually. You know, people are going to listen to this and say, 
Oh, you're full of shit. Really? Well, ask I know. Rick, people don't you. understand. You, your ears are fine tuned for yeah. listening to certain nuances of tone that yeah. other people don't hear. But um, yeah. So so you know. So when I got those amps, I was never the smart businessman. Okay, I, I was always just doing the stuff. So when I got those amps from Aspen, you know, I had to tube them and set them up because when I sold them to my customers, they were like the best amp you could get. I mean, they were. So Reaming. I mean, they were just, you know, not something thing you bought off of. Um, there was no Craigslist. It was These weren't modded amps. The, These were just you like call stock. It? You the, made them the, more Whatever, stock. the buyer's guide or something, and you ran out, and, it, and, the, and, the, and the amps of pile of junk. You know, these things were pristine, you know, and, and, and I was at top dollar, like $600. It was, now those amps are worth thousands and thousands and 10000 20000 20, Those guys, a lot of them still have them, and they, and they, and they, and they you know, they're they happy. They think of you fondly. Yeah, they're happy they bought them, you know. But they, they were in top condition, you know. So um, so that's another thing, like I say, you can thank him for. That all these good Marshall amps are in the country now? Yeah. And uh, and and and, uh, and Ken helped them with that book a lot. They were, they were good friends, you know. Um, the Tube Amp book? Yeah, the Tube this Amp book. This is the book. Tube Amp book, too. For me, it was good because it, it was my Bible. And let me have it, sweetheart. This was my Bible, okay? There's an elastic around this for a good reason, because <laughs> it's, it's destroyed, okay? The spine fell apart because, from... Yeah, because I spent, you know, probably 100 hours of my life studying schematics of... Looks like more than that. All the amps I worked on all those years, Fender amps, Marshall amps, you know, all those amps. So when you got an amp, you'd look it up in there and make sure that you had the, the, well, that, the original schematic. That was the purpose of this, on. you know, was for guys like me to have that, because there was no internet. Right. Okay, but and they weren't in the library. You but it's not what I used it for. Okay, what do you use I it used for? it for that. But but what I used it more for was you know I owned just about every amp there was and worked on just about every amp there was. But um, if I want to design an amp, I can design the amp on paper. Okay, sure, and then the when I build it, and I'm not just talking about the schematic. I'm talking about the brand of every part too. Okay. I can build that amp, and I'm going to hear exactly what I wanted to hear. I might have to tweak a couple of tiny things, okay? And and part part of how you wind up being able to do that over a lot of experience is staring at those schematics, because you know the amps, you have them, you've worked on them, you know exactly what each one sounds like, and you go, why? Now that book doesn't show you what the parts were like, what kind of resistor it was, but you remember that because you've been in those amps looking, okay? Or so you had. Yeah, if you had, and then so you can you you learn to read those schematics in a different way. You learn to look at those schematics and hear the sound while you're looking at everything that was done and what parts were used. And that really helps you design. So Aston your Pittman stuff. compiled all of the current amps into and it, one book. Yes, and it keeps you from screwing people's amps up by putting metal film resistors where they don't belong. You know, because you know these things. You know that's going to kill the sound of the amp. You know, instead of just doing it and then listening to it and go, I'll. Give me my money, you know. I, I just did this to your amp, you know. Um, sometimes you have to search out for the older stuff, you know, the older parts. New old stock or vintage parts or whatever. Right. Like you, some of the parts you use in your amps. Yeah. So. Yeah, he 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 was definitely a big force in this business. There's no doubt about it. I still have a quad of tubes in my stereo system that he handed me. What maybe? I don't think that'll see it down there. You might want to get up at the bottom. Closer. Yeah, the bottom. He handed me those tubes maybe 35 years ago. Okay. He just said he had a whole batch of them come in. They were from uh, Yugoslavia. He thought they were good. They were KT90s. Well, no one had even heard them yet. They were being made over there. Okay. And he and and. Uh, I was over there buying stuff like I always was because I had my shop in Van Nuys, you know. And he said, come here. He says, you got to see this. And he pulls one out. And it's the friggin' size. Of, it's it's like huge. You just saw them. I mean, it's giant, but it looks like a like a 12AX7 on the top, like a massive giant co combination between an EL34 and a 12AX7. I'd never seen anything like it. And he says, these are KT90s. These things are wicked good. Uh, and he had just tested and he handed them to me and said, Take Where's he them. from? Who? Aston Pittman. California. Southern Cal. You know. Oh, he was from here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I, No, I don't think he was b born here, uh, but I forget 
where he was. Well, if he was saying wicked. <laughs> well, maybe that was. That was just my said. Boston lingo jumping in there. Whatever it meant, wicked good. Whatever he said, okay. But anyway, I took him and I I put him in one of the big gold amps, and I was like, oh my god! But they to me they weren't a guitar tube, but. You know, then I looked and went, oh, those are for the stereo, yeah. And of course, I bought a lot of them from him. And I Did you, you ever put them in amps, or did you just use them for home stereo? Yeah, I'm going to tell you a little secret about tubes here. Um, secret? Tube secrets? Ooh. Yeah, tube secrets. These are next to go in this quad so this right here. So this is a tone talk on tubes. Sure. And, and the memorial to okay. Aspen. P. Now, I get these tubes here that I choose for these amps, okay, they're, they're KT77s, alright, and they're the ones I like the best from these guys here, um, JJ, we all know about that company, alright, now, it's a big tube, this relates to those KT90s that he handed me, I'm going to tell you a little story about how this works, okay, when a company, by the way, the KT90s don't exist anymore because, um, we blew their factory up in, what do you mean? in the 90s when Clinton was in there and he went in there and oh, bombed awesome. Yugoslavia. Okay, but because they all their planes flew on tubes and their communications worked on tubes, so it's it's so you by hit killing that. their that's tube factory, yeah, we that, were ha helping to yeah, destroy that's like their that's like hitting like? the the uh, um, <clears throat> the um, our, uh, well, thanks, Clinton. The uh, the 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 uh, factory that makes plutonium or something. You know what I mean for the nuclear so bomb. So it never came back. No, I never. Ne that tube was never made again. Okay, but by the time they blew that factory up, those tubes sucked. Okay, because it only takes sometimes a couple of years from for a great tube to become a shit tube. Okay? Well, the tolerance is good. Tolerance is horrible. Shit. You know why? I'm gonna tell you why. Here's the secret. In the old days, when everything ran on tubes, tube companies were builders were everywhere, the factories, and they had like engineers in there that really understood this stuff. And, and something they're testing else, it every week they understood, stuff. yeah, because the tooling wears out, and the tube doesn't like come out the same tube anymore. You can't just keep making these things off of the same tooling, and they knew that because they wouldn't be able to, to sell them. your machinery. Because everyone would notice that they sucked, okay, and stop buying them. So. What happens is same thing with those KT90s. That the first few runs, they're killer good. Is that one of the ones you got? Yeah, and then they start to suck. Okay, this is a this is no different. Okay, this is a KT77. Takes me a while to get quads because I remember when these came out, and I remember that one through ten. It's different numbers now, but I know these numbers. Okay, everyone uses their own numbering system. I remember these when they first came out. They all were in a certain range. Now, all it's very the hard to get some in that range. And I know what that range is, because I was around when these came out. And that's first the ones that you spec your amps for? That's what I spec in my amps. I get them, and it's no secret, because I buy them from two different companies, and their label is on them. So if you want new tubes in a year or two... Look at your tube. As long as one number. doesn't blow, these things will go for years on these. These KT77s last a long time. I think they just sound better when they're worn in pretty good. But... You you see the company name and the number on there, you know, and Just that's what you yeah. If you if you if you're mm -hmm. privy to owning my amps, you know, but that's what happens with tubes, okay, and uh, and Aspen went through that testing tubes, you know, all the time, and when he was buying older vintage tubes and testing those and numbering those, that wasn't a problem because. Um, you know that that that, the, that they always so his one their through tour. ten numbers would be a range of the numbers that are on the tubes. Today. Right, exactly. Like if you buy tubes that say uh, such and such milliamp and such and such transconductance, right? You know that would be a three. <laughs> yeah, he would break that down from one to ten. The meter didn't say one. Two, he made three, it for you, you know. for you dummies. Yeah, the meter is at, and 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 if it says it draws. 42 milliamps, that doesn't mean when you put it in your amp, it's going to draw 42 milliamps. That means it drew 42 milliamps in his test circuit test with a circuit. given voltage that he chose and a given turnback negative voltage. Okay? Well, it sounds like, 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 so, like if, if someone was going to do that today, they could make it a little bit more exact, but at the time, nobody was doing it at all, so his was far better than nothing then, huh? No, no, his... 
It was pretty. It was pretty. This accurate. was exact enough, because because you can break, you know, all those numbers down to one through ten, in your head. Because if you know about tubes, it's like give me a four or five, and if all you have is a six, I'll take a six. Okay, because that's right there in the so middle. So four to six was the that's range. the great tube. You know what I mean? So you don't want the real low end. You don't want the real high. Right. Right. So, so seven, eight, nine. Or so one, if you're two, getting three, numbers like, oh, well, when I tested them on my machine, these are 32s and these are 34s and these are 68s or whatever, you know, as long as you know that company and you've bought the extremes, do you know you know the one through ten value of their numbers? But if you so around, what's more important, the range that it's in, like the number, like the 68 or the 34, or the fact that all four tubes, or however many tubes you have, both are in the same range? Both, both. They're uh, both right. Yeah, because match tubes are very important for a good sounding amp. And right in the sweet spot is obviously ideal. Yeah, um, but the, the other thing you mentioned uh, uh, about them being way out of range. So let me explain how that works. Why, then why can they sell these? How come they keep selling and you buy these and there's a number... 72 things drawing 72 milliamps that ain't going anywhere used to near crappy sounding amps that ain't going anywhere near my amp okay well unless somebody puts it in there no. who bought one let me explain something okay most of these amps you're used to have an adjustable bias circuit okay so you can turn it way down and put this crappy tube in it okay that's not that not this one but one that's drawing a shitload of current now keep and, and all you're doing is neutering the amp Okay, you're taking all the, um, you know, the goodness out of the amp to run that terrible tube, and people don't even know that, and they, they you know, they, they bias, bias the amp it the until tubes. it sounds okay enough. Not till it sounds okay enough, till the meter tells them it's, it's in a range, because if you put that in, it's drawing 72 milliamps, and there's four of them in there doing it, you're going to smoke the power transformer, you know, so or, or blow the fuse, you know, or they're going to red plate. So, so red plate. Yeah, the the plate actually starts glowing red, okay. So, so what you're doing is, I don't, I don't have that kind of circuit. In my amp, you're going to use good tubes or not. Uh, or you're not going to turn it on because, because I want the best sound. So I don't put, adjustable biases came out for mass marketing of amplifiers. I'm and sure so, some of your clients so are that, switching the tubes out. And so that Leo Fender could buy, you know, thousands of tubes, not even match them, and just pop them in those amps and then sit there on the bench and turn the amp to whatever it took to make it run with those tubes and send it out. Okay. So you got a one and a five and a seven and a nine and they were gonna make it somewhere around a seven and a half. Yeah, they had no concern at all for matching side to side whatsoever. They didn't even have any concern of really high drawing tubes. They just stick them in and turn the turn the negative it was voltage. Just like every tube was the same turn, tube. Turn the negative voltage way up, okay? on the amp to turn that tube back, well, you know, that, that really restricts the tone of the amp. So anyway, hopefully you learned a little bit about that, but I just wanted to say a few words about Aspen, because I, I don't see much out there. Uh, well, no, there's a few things up there. I yeah, there's, there's a few things, you know, but... Uh, Probably not as many people know the he, he the, did, bo the, bear, the bones of what right. he, he did was have, doing. He did have a, a couple of amp designs out there. He sold one to, to Fender. It was a acoustic guitar amp of some sorts. I don't know anything about that kind of stuff. To me... You rarely play acoustic guitar. Well, I'm old-fashioned. I think a microphone needs to amplify it. But I don't... I, but you know, if you're playing out live, that's another story. You know? But but um, but that was pretty good thing he did there. Um, he actually sold that tube company to Fender. Wow, um, that's a good sale. I, I lost touch with him over the years, okay, because, you know... He sold that company in 2008, I think, and then by then everybody was, you know, already doing tubes. Um, but um, you said he came to your room at the amp show. Studio stuff. He, he. I think he was. I think he had a studio or something. I, I don't. I don't know. I don't I know. I I, like I said, I lost touch with that. him. I tried to hook up with him at the amp show. It was back in 2011. My room was packed, and the guys were just wailing on the guitar and. The room was full, and then somebody told me after he was there, trying to get up to the front to say hi. But um, I didn't see him because I mean, I mean, there was there was thirty people in that room if there was one, and I was down here messing with chords and stuff for people, you know, showing them different sounds and stuff. So, so I missed him there, but to catch up a little bit. But um, yeah, big contribution. Well, he'll be missed. That's for sure. And he yes, and Kenny sure. can have all kind of tube amp discussions in the 
the rock great, and roll, <laughs> the great beyond, the rock and roll tube amp afterlife place right. they go. All right, this video is getting way too long. All right. Peace out. R.I.P. Aspen Pittman.